My name is Hakeem Brown. Today we're going to be talking about people who have been abducted by aliens. This is Pop City Culture. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Welcome to the most listened to international podcast around the world. Hakeem and Reggie Brown are two young African-American boys speaking the truth. This is Pop Pop City Culture. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? That's right, this is Reggie, and I'm here, and we're going to be talking about some good stuff today. (laughs) Oh, man, it's going to be about... People who have been abducted by aliens. And, you know, we all know that this is a topic I like because I believe in a lot of these conspiracy theories. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Reggie. I know what you're saying. So, Reggie, you always have believed in aliens and life on other planets. You know what, man? They gotta be, you know? So, tell me, have you ever seen a UFO? Yo, man, I've seen lots of things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you look up at the sky, you keep saying they might be satellites or something, but I swear, I swear one of those times it had got to be a UFO. In fact, you were there, well, you and I were there at the end of our street when we saw this UFO. It was big and it was red, flying in the sky real slow, and then it came to a stop. Then it turned green and blue, made a half circle, and turned red again and zipped off. Man, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Man, that was like the first one, I real one I think I ever seen. You remember that, right? Yes, Reggie, I do remember that. But, you know, we have to put everything into perspective, too. Say what? Because even though we see it, we don't really know if it's a UFO from Mm-mm-mm. who a you know, flying saucer or whatever you want to call it, a spaceship. Could have been a mothership. From another world. Yeah. Or if it's interdimensional uh-huh. or it's parallel worlds. Or it even could be man-made from us and our government. Yo, man, you know full well that ain't our government. Man, if we had that kind of technology, we'd be we'd be doing some hi-fi stuff. We, Man, shut up. Just get on with the show. Man, you, you sound sort of stupid again, man. Man, just get, I want to hear about people's abductions. Now, you got all this stuff there. So you just, you know, how are you going to start this? Well, first I was going to say alien abductions have made for a great sci-fi plot in all movies. I mean, there's movies. Yeah, man, I love my movies. That span back 50 years when people talk about aliens and being abducted and UFOs taking over the world. That's right, man. I remember War of the Worlds. I saw that. And, oh, man, that, like, blew my mind. And I I guess I saw the recent one. That was the one with Tom Cruise, you know? Yes, that that's right, Reggie. That was Tom Cruise. But there was another one way back. Really? When they'd, you know, I don't know if it was actually a TV show or another movie, but it was probably a Maybe movie. Maybe you do your homework. And they've also had miniseries. But that was actually based upon a, a radio show uh, way, way back. And I guess... When they first aired War of the Worlds, um, I believe it was Orson Welles. Yeah, that was his name. People were actually believing this was true, that aliens were actually taking over the world. And the whole nation was in a frenzy because the sound effects were realistic. It was awesome. Uh, They had, like, lasers going everywhere. Man, that sounds off the hook. And military men. It, It was, you know, for that time, it was pretty traumatic. And Sounds like it was realistic, too. Who knows? Maybe if there are aliens or something out there, the government's sort of afraid to admit there's something like that because of what happened based upon a radio drama show way, 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 way back in the day. Well, you know, you know, Hakeem, you could be right because people starting to lose their mind. But that was back then. You know, like 50 years ago, people were like cavemen. You know that. Nowadays, we're more sophisticated, and we got a lot of technology. So, you know, we're a lot better than, than how we used to be, don't you think? Well, Reggie, I'm sure sure we are, because a lot of people, in fact, um, for example, Nevada, that's where they have the Roswell incident. That's right, man. That Roswell was when that spaceship crashed, and all those aliens got taken to 
a military base like Area 51, and then they experiment on him, and they did an autopsy, and it was like like an autopsy movie okay. on it, too. Okay, calm down. Calm down, Reggie, because, nope, I think the autopsy film was actually found to be a fraud and not actually real. Say what? So, man, I would expect you to say something like that because, you know, you ain't a believer, man. You just ain't a believer. You like a hater, Hakeem, you know, and if you're going to do alien stuff like this, you know, you got to you got to be here with an open mind. And you obviously to me, it don't sound like you got an open mind. OK. OK, well, let's open up our mind a little bit and uh, talk about um, you guys. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody's heard of. Betty and Barney Hill. I heard of them. I never met them. Now, they were abducted. Now, the Hills... Man, this is going to get good, you know? Yes, yes, Reggie. Okay. Now, the Hills lived in Portmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, Barney was born 1922 to 1969. He was employed by the United States Postal Service. Thank you for your service. And Betty, his wife, uh, she was born in 1919. She was a social worker. Now... I'm going to let you guys know. This is this was a time where interracial marriage uh, really was sort of looked down upon. That's a damn shame. People gave you a hard time. Terrible. But Barney, he, he was black, and Betty, she was white. So just so you guys know exactly what's going on. So uh, let me see. It says here. Let me get the Sounds picture. like you ain't too prepared there, brother. Uh, yeah, Betty was a social worker. She was active in the local Unitarian congregation. Uh, that's probably a church. And the Hills were also members of the NAACP. Yo, you know what that stands for? The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. That's right, Reggie. And, uh, you know, they were members of it and community leaders. And Barney sat on the local board of the United States Commission of Civil Rights. Yo, I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. That, that dude sounds like he was all up in everything. Man, this guy was something. Yeah, and like I said, they were an interracial couple at the time when it was particularly uncommon in the United States. You know, like I said, Barney was black and Betty was white. Now, let me tell you what happened. Yeah, you tell me what happened. I got to hear this. According to a variety of reports given by the Hills, the alleged UFO sighting happened on September 19th, 1961 at around 10.30 p.m. The Hills were driving back to Portsmouth from a vacation in Niagara Falls and Montreal, just south of Lancaster, New Hampshire. Now, Betty claimed to have observed a bright point of light in the sky mm -hmm. that moved mm -hmm. far below the moon and the planet Jupiter upward to the west of the moon And while Barney was driving. Well, they weren't drinking. Um, now, they were driving on Route 3, and Betty reasoned that she was observing a falling star. You know, she, she wasn't quite sure what she was seeing because probably at the time people weren't really up to date on, you know, UFOs and stuff. They probably weren't up to date because you don't see that every but, day. you know, it started moving upward. And since the light was moving erratically and grew bigger and brighter, Betty urged Barney to stop the car for a closer look. Oh, no, they didn't. As well as walk their dog, Delcy. Now, Barney stopped at a scenic picnic area just south of Twin Mountains. Yo, man, you going to tell me they saw a UFO and it was getting bigger and closer. They got no idea what it was. And then these two people and their dog, Delcy, decide to get out the car and take a look. Yes, that's that's what I'm saying. Yo, man, that's like almost out of a horror movie, man. You just, <laughs> just some stuff you don't do, man. But go go on, go on. Man, go get, get on with the story and stop interrupting me. Reggie, I didn't interrupt you. Uh, you interrupted me. Yo, man, whatever. Just get on with it. Okay. So Betty, she had some binoculars, and as she looked through it, she observed an odd shape. The craft was flashing multicolored lights and traveling across the face of the moon. I mean, she couldn't believe what she was seeing uh, because her sister, several years earlier, had said she had seen a UFO. Sounds like this stuff might run in the family. I don't know. I heard stories about stuff like that. Now, Betty thought it might be what she was observing because, you know, before she had never seen anything like this. So, you know, Barney looked at it and uh, he couldn't really tell what it was, but he was like, wow, this is 
This is something, and... Man, when you see something like that, you know it is something. Because, you know, that's like something that's just unearthly. Something not of this earth. No, as we know, um, according to them, they were abducted. And after, after they would get these nightmares and dreams, so they decided to Man, go that's scary, you see know? what was going on. So they went to a hip, hypnotist, a doctor, a therapist, and they... Put him under hypnosis, and uh, so what happened next? You know, Betty's dreams were started ten days after the alleged UFO encounter. She began having a series of these vivid dreams, and they continued for five nights. Never in her memory had she recalled dreams in such detail and intensity. Yo, man, that's what I'm saying. That's like a nightmare, man. You know? Yes, but they stopped abruptly after five nights and never returned. Um, but they still occupied her thoughts. She was always thinking about it because she said. What happened? We, what, you know, I don't remember everything that happened. You know, and, you know, Barney was the same way. Man, that's some amnesia stuff. So, like I said, you know, they ended up getting hypnotized. And there was a whole thing about how they were up on a craft and they were probed. And, you know, they did have the missing time, like a lot of people say. A lot of people be confirming stuff like that. So, that's one of the biggest, biggest beginning stories um, of alien abductions just to, to like give you guys like a brief up to date of exactly what's going on yo man but tell them about the star map okay so betty um under hypnosis she had recalled seeing a star map of all the travels where these aliens travel to in the worlds and where they came from and you know you gotta say she had never seen a star map before. She didn't even know much about stars and stuff. But man, this was something else. Go go on. Go on and tell them what and, happened. And uh, on the map. Yeah, yeah. And she had drawn a star map of where the aliens may have come from. So Now we got a limited amount of time. So, so we're going to move on. And we're, we are going to meet the abductees and hear their stories. That's now, what I'm talking about. They're not here, but this is what they had said happened to them. Uh, so who's the first one, man? Get to it. Well, the first one is Cynthia. Um, and a guy had interviewed all these people. In case you don't know, that guy so was a reporter. here's what they said. So the first one is Cynthia. And here's what she had to say about her abduction. I've met salamander beings, and I've met various different types of greys. I've also met blue Arcturians, which are incredible. They have their own personalities and their own purpose. I've met Androm Andromedans and Assyrian warriors of light. I've met the Sirius Nephrons. I've also met cat people who are from Sirius. I've actually seen people that can shape shift from human looking to reptiles. Oh man, are you serious? See, I told you there was stuff like that, Hakeem. I told you this stuff is real, but you just don't want to believe it. Um, Reggie, it's not that the fact that I don't want to believe it. I just like to get all the facts. And I never said I didn't believe any of this stuff. I'm saying we're doing a show on this so we can see exactly what's going on in the world and out the world. So, you know, she also said many of the star seeds that are here on Earth on special missions are taking to the ships where they are then informed of the change in the strategies. I've never yet ever met a being that was malevolent. I don't even know what that word means. I've always met the good ones. I'd never experienced unconditional love till I've met them face to face and had a conscious contact with them. Now, this is what Cynthia said. So Cynthia is saying all of her encounters were peaceful. And everybody she encountered who were from other worlds treated her very nice. Uh, what do you think about that, Reggie? Yo, man, I think it's off the hook, man. You know, I'm telling you, I, this stuff this stuff just ain't scary. This is like real-life stuff because we all know there's aliens out there and we know there's life on other planets. Well, how do you know this, Reggie? Yo, man, what? Man, shut up and just go on to the next person who saw the UFO. I'm not, I'm not in for your games today. Okay. So the next abductee, his name was Sebastian. This is what he had to say. It looked like a little kid except for their big eyes. It looked just like a little kid except... Now, there's a different type of alien. It had big, big eyes, small nose, and a little mouth. Albert Einstein was right about something. How there's 
different dimensions and different realities and stuff. I'm thinking they went through time, if you will know what I mean. If they're out there, if they know all this is happening and they have all this technology and stuff, then what are the odds of them coming back now? Yo, I think the odds are good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Obviously, aliens are coming here. Yo, man, I go on social media and I see videos of aliens all over the place. So you see the aliens? The actual aliens? No, man, I'm talking the alien ships, like the UFOs. Ain't that what this show's about? The show's about alien abductees, not about their ships. Don't, just go on to the next one. Well, hang on, because I wasn't done. So Sebastian said that they didn't. he didn't get probed. Uh, they didn't do anything like that. They just opened up his eyes, and it was kind of crazy because um, they asked him something, and they actually could read his mind. And he, he said he was a little bit scared, and it was something a little bit crazy. How did they leave? Um, how did they leave? Yeah, how did they leave? Just like they appeared, he'd said. You would think what you want, but that's what happened to me. So I guess, you know... Man, that's some crazy stuff. That's like that telepathy stuff, you know what I'm saying? I guess they came and went exactly, you know, from the ship to the ship. And Sebastian says they came from a different dimension. Man, that is crazy, man. So, so you know, and it sounds like Sebastian was very young. A lot, un un unfortunately, it doesn't say how old these abductees were, which I'm a little bit annoyed about because it would be great if we just had their had their age and probably the year this happened because we're not sure if this happened 50 years ago 20 years ago yesterday so that would be a lot better yo yo l let me read one of them okay okay here here's the paper the next one is sasha now she says my consciousness was in the middle of a huge dome-like structure the inside of the structure was white and then they wore coves in it that were big enough for people to sit in meditation, and they were sitting cross-legged. Some of them wore white robes. Some of them had long hair. They were all humanoid. There were some I couldn't quite tell what they were, but I got the feeling they were a type of human. The atmosphere in this place was absolutely beautiful. It was golden light, and the background was white, like it was whitewashed. And it was a place of meditating on peace and love. Now, what you think of that, Hakeem? Well, I think you did a good job there for reading that. No, man, I'm talking about what you think about her experience. Well, you know, she's saying hers was a consciousness. Um, so I don't think she was physically there. So somehow she's saying that the aliens took her consciousness Yo, that's right. That's exactly what she's saying. Just like I said, man, like you ain't even and listening. And brought her somewhere. And she was among all these other humanoid kind of beings. Yes, yeah, she was. So I guess you can go physically or consciously that's right. to a lot of these alien places, according to these abductees. Yo, man, that's right. You know, they just, they've got that kind of technology, man. It's just like I'm saying, you know, when you dream at night, how you know you're really still in your bed? I mean, your consciousness could be off somewhere else in some different kind of reality, you know? Yes, I know. So, Lisa, this is what she said. Uh, this being handed me a small baby. Oh, no. Oh, no, they didn't. Are you? Is this one of those stories where the abductee got pregnant in like an hour and then the baby grew up? Well, Reggie, we're going to see. So let me continue because, you know, you keep interrupting me. I can't help it. I'm just so excited about the topic we got today, you know? Uh, okay, so where was I? Um, I'm just going to start over, Reggie. This being handed me a small baby. It looked up to me and he handed me a second one that shouldn't have been there. I woke up screaming and so angry. Came back with bruising that shouldn't have been there. I had a hole in the back of my head uh, that under black light glowed with a triangle around it. That's the physical evidence people get. I like to myself that they were dreams, but somewhere inside myself, I knew it was much more than Yo, that. Yo, I'm telling you, the aliens impregnated her. They, they probably gave her two babies and they grew them up and then they put her back. That's what they do. They block your memory. They got some kind of laser probe, you know? Uh, I'm just going to agree with you, okay, Reggie, because I don't want you to get mad. So, okay, yeah, sure. 
Man, don't be sitting there agree with me just because you want to agree with me and you think you're just going to shut me up. That ain't even right. Just go on with, get, go on with what you're they saying. They got some kind of a memory probe or something that where they can implant stuff in your head or take stuff out because that's what aliens do. Right. Yo, man, that that's that's so wrong, Hakeem. You know, you're just um, patronizing me now. So next. Next. Okay, so next we have Jeannie. Um, she says... I was awakened in the middle of the night with feel with a weird feeling, heat around her mid parts. She said she could feel these long, skinny, bony fingers drawing circles um, on her ovaries, and she felt paralyzed. Man, that's scary. Um, she said, "Oh shoot!" I don't think she used that word. They're really here. Oh my God! I'm not sure how I saw them. She said, uh, but then she realized that there was an energy flowing through her, and it felt different. It was totally unnerving to her. And she realized they were visiting her quite often. Now, these were the smaller gray ones. Sound like the three feet ones. Um, who were a little bit taller than three or four feet. Ain't that what I said? She also said they had telepathy. She was screaming, please stop what, they're, stop what you're doing. I don't want you to touch me. And she asked them three times, but they didn't stop. Because they don't listen. So they were going to knock her out with a white light again and she woke up in her bed oh man i see that's what that's what i'm talking about man you know you know they also don't these aliens like take cows too and they you know like animal sacrifices or something no uh reggie but there are i think there are animal abduction you know what we have to do a show on that we'll, we'll do a show on that in a few weeks because we, you know before we say stuff I told you, Reggie, before we say stuff like this, we need to do our homework so we know what we're talking about. But we could probably make another show out of that. What do you think? Yo, man, I think we should because, you know, not to get off the beaten trail, but I do remember hearing a story about a farmer, how he saw a UFO up in the sky pick up one of his cows with a beam of light, and then he dropped the cow somewhere miles away, and they found the, car, the, the, found the cow bloodless. There was, like, no blood in it. You know? Yeah, I, I remember that story. We, you know, we had talked about that, but you know, we have to verify stuff too. You know, we just can't have a podcast and just spur out any kind of information. Yo, man, I know what you think, man. Man, next again. Okay, so the next abductee, his name was Stephen. He says he was in the middle of an auditorium with stadium seating, and there were podiums down at the bottom, and he was led to a seat, and all around him were some humanoids, and there were all different types. All different types of these alien beings. Mm, mm, mm. And as they brought him down the aisle, he went, He said he wanted to stay. And he started crying. And he didn't like to be there. Oh, man, I feel sorry for this guy. You know what I'm saying? But they said, no, it's it's not your time. You have to help save the planet. Say, what? Man, now this is getting good. Oh, man, you got to go on about this. They were trying to explain to him. What were they explaining? That they were going to give him information so he could save the planet. I guess that's all he said he could remember because this is one of the shortest, shortest jots we have on here. Yo, yeah, yeah see? Because a lot of these aliens, I think they know we're going to destroy ourselves because we got so much technology, you know, and so many weapons of mass destruction. Yo, I mean, you look at the world and it's just crazy now, man. <laughs> I say it's just crazy. There's like so much hate, so much war, so much catastrophe going on. So much disrespect, man. And maybe these aliens just want to help us out so we can make our world better. You're probably right, you know, if, if aliens exist. Here we go down the hate and bath. Uh-uh. Sure, they want to help make the world better. But, you know, we could make it better, too, if we just sat down and listened. So, Steve, he's another alien abductee. And he says, his exact words are, it started rocking back and forth and Travis stands up. A bluish green light comes out and zaps him. He flies back about 20 feet where he was zapped, and it got him. When I said, I got him, Mike takes off and Man, leaves him. this sounds all too familiar. And they were going down a highway, and then they stopped. You know, this almost sounds, sounds like the uh, Travis incident, where Tra Travis, I, I'm not sure what his last name is, but these guys were out um, fishing or in the woods, and their buddy got taken by, an, by a UFO. And his buddies took off. They, they didn't help him or anything. They were being investigated because they, the police thought there was some foul play happening there. But I guess he came back 
Travis, and he came back with a story about how he was abducted and he was on an alien ship and they were probing him. Man, I wouldn't want no friends like Travis. They made movies about it. He's also done interviews, and from what I understand, he's never taken one penny from all of his interviews. He just wants people to know what happened to him. But some people were saying they were drunk, that none of this ever happened. Haters gonna hate. He stands by his word, and he says it did happen. He says everything he said happened, and everything is true. So... You, you you have to to look through what everybody's saying. Um, were they traumatized by some incident in their life? Was it a bad dream? Was it a was it a whole bunch of people who had the same experience or traumatic experience? But Travis, um, I will say, out of a lot of the stories. Yeah, and I, I I did see the movie, so there is some special effects and stuff going around in my head. Special effects make the movie. His his sounds sort of sort of legit, you know. It's the first time you're gonna hear me say that. Yo, man, I'm glad it's the first time because now it means your mind is getting open. You know what I mean? So, anybody else? Yeah. Um, there's Heather. Now she says, "I don't know what happened. All I knew is something happened." And about a month later, out of nowhere, um. She had a whole bunch of data downloaded in her brain. Man, her brain is like a computer now. Into her mind, which she couldn't explain. Because that's technology beyond our comprehension. She believes that she has implants, uh, and the implants are up her nose, because she's had many nosebleeds on particular dates and times. Hey, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, I get nosebleeds too. Do you think I ought to be worried about something like that? No, Reggie, I think your nosebleeds is from the weather and it being so warm. Well, I'm just saying, you never know. You know, I could have been abducted, you know, because if nosebleeds is one of the signs, don't you think that, you know, maybe, possibly, since your mind is getting open, I could have been abducted? No, Reggie, I don't think that. So why don't we just move on? Okay, move on then. I was just saying, you know, it's just our show. Just go on. And every time she got one, she feels like she's been upgraded. And she also feels she's become more clairvoyant and aware of what's going on around her. Yo, man, clairvoyant, you know, that means psychic, like she can predict stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So she feels that they gave her um, some abilities or maybe they opened up her mind a little more. You know, they say we only use a certain percentage of our, our brains. But now you have this girl saying, you know, she uses a whole lot more. So... <clears throat> Uh, there's another person. His name is Terrence. Tell me about this Terrence person because you know I know you've been through a lot of a lot of witnesses. So tell me about this guy. Um, Terrence said I would see them come through a wall or through a door, and I would just mentally say, "Do what you have to do as long as you don't hurt me," and I'd pass out. Oh man! Then about four years ago, I just got tired of it. I said, "Look, you guys shouldn't be doing that." Because I felt like they were down in areas they shouldn't be. It made him very uncomfortable. Um, he kept telling them to stop. He's disappointed. He didn't like them coming. Um, but I guess the aliens hoped that he was going to be learning something from him. They never talked to him anymore after that um, to give him a message as a, for anything. So he hasn't seen them in a while. But he does remember the experience. So, so I was like, that dude scared him off. That being said, um, you know, UFO sightings, they've been traced back to the days of prehistoric man. Yo, man, are you serious? How you know that? Because on ancient rock, you know, which they call rock arts, you could see spacecrafts or mysterious symbols and non-human and non-animal creatures that can be found on them and all over the cave walls, too. And there's an overwhelming number of encounters have, that have recently been given to the attention they deserve. UFO abduction stories and alien contacts have poured into the mainstream for decades, even though those who claim the experience often find themselves the brunt of social mock. Nobody wants to be making fun of. The blunt of social jokes. Yo, man, that's sad, too, you know, because people just want to speak out and they want to say what happened to them and nobody giving them no support. Yo, man, somebody should be, like, Smacked across the face or something. Yo, Reggie, we ain't got to go there. We ain't got to say what people got to do to people. Yo, man, but you know, they just disrespecting people when they like straight up calling them liars, man. You know that ain't right. Well, you know, it's not right, but everybody has their own opinion. 
and this is America, and you have freedom of speech and opinion. So um, there have been political candidates, on the other hand, who are rarely given a leg to stand on if they discuss abduction experiences. Like who? Wait. Let me let me get to it, okay? Okay, don't let me stop you. Uh, these political candidates are almost guaranteed to be a subject of harsh criticism that includes attack on their character, judgment, mental stability, and even their fitness to hold an office. Now, most recently, Bettina R- Rodriguez Aguilera, Republican candidate for Florida 27th Congressional District, admitted to the press that she had been abducted by aliens. Oh, no, she didn't. Oh, man, that is like a suicide. You're right. I believe in the conspiracies, but, yo, man, when you that whole pri- when you are that high profile, you cannot, you cannot be that honest, man. So are you saying politicians shouldn't be honest? Yo, man, that ain't what I'm saying. Stop trying to put words in my mouth. Just shut up and get on with your stuff. All right, okay. So it was almost predicted that the response was quick and harsh and used as a political weapon against her. Now, there's uh, Jerry Lanetti of the New York Times. He added fuel to the fire when he wrote, of course, Rodriguez Aguilera, alien abduction story is extremely bonkers. Man, he said that that is some cold Medina, you know what I'm saying? And she still stands by it, which, by New York Times estimations, either precludes her from being endorsed by any or should make her eligible for president of Earth. Because if her story is true, she could be the one true leader who unites humans against a future alien invasion. Yo, man, see, that ain't right. Now they just mocking her, man. That figures, man. Whatever, man. Man, what else you got? You got anything else? What else you got? Well, right now, I brings us to the uh, end of our show. So you know what I got? Right, Reggie? Yo, man, I know what it is. <laughs> it is time for your words of wisdom. Take it away, Hakeem. This universe is old as time itself. There are many things that we don't know about the world and unanswered questions. Is there life out there beyond the stars? There is something that all of us want to know. There is something that all of us need to know and we yearn to know because it is in our genes, in our soul, in our hearts, and in our minds. We want questions answered. We stare at the stars at night looking for answers. I know I do. But the question remains, is there life out there? And what do they look like? And what do they want? People have said that they have been abducted by these not of this world humanoid aliens. These people have also said they have implants and scars and markings on their bodies and they have bruises to show for it. There is proof as far as they are concerned but many of these people's experiences are dismissed. They are labeled as loony and crazy. Is this fair? Is this fair for anyone? Anyone who speaks up about their experiences which doesn't coincide to another person's beliefs. Long ago People said there were monsters roaming the woods. In 1902, that monster was discovered to be what we know today as the gorilla. There are many other species that we have discovered in the last 10 years that we never knew were there. So is it hard to imagine that there is life out there in space or hiding in the ocean or from other dimensions or parallel worlds? I don't know, I don't have the answers. None of us have the answers, but there are people who say they have answers because they've had experiences because they have been abducted. The next time you stare at the stars, look up and wave. Wave at somebody who might be looking down on you because you never know if somebody is. And you never know who you may meet. Yo, man, that was deep. That was real deep. I felt it and I understood every word, man. Because, you know, I'm a believer. I want to thank you for those words of wisdom. That really meant a lot to me and all the believers out there. Now, we're going to be ending the show. Thank you, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us for this episode. And we will see you next time on Pop City Culture. Until then, be kind and affectionate to one another. Remember who you are. Peace.